be all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These words of our Savior is an invitation to all who would believe in him, an invitation to come and learn of him, to learn from him, to learn how to be like him. Let us worship God in the beauty of his holiness and in the holiness of his beauty as we bow our heads in prayer. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thy will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. Gracious and eternal God, who is not only our Father, but also our comforting friend. We come asking your mercy and your grace and begging for your forgiveness. We acknowledge our sins and our transgressions and they have separated us from you and separated us from each other. We cry out with the psalmist, wash us with hyssop and make us clean. Purge us from our unrighteousness. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation and let us walk in newness of life. We lift before you all those who are burdened, all those whose hearts are broken, and all those who need the strength to carry on. We acknowledge our weakness, but in that acknowledgement of our weakness, we lean upon your strength. We live before you, our nation, plagued with so many problems. And we ask, O oh God, that you help us to build a beloved community where justice will roll down like many waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Hear the cries of those who are hurting and allow us to hear their cry as well. Use us as instruments of your peace and hasten the day when we will be able to live together as one nation under God. Accept the worship and accept the praise we offer. We humbly ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to speak today from this subject. Keeping the faith when life really hurts. Keeping the faith when life really hurts. The biblical foundation for the message comes from the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. It reads this way. Then Job rose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And verse 22 ends with this. In all this, Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. Keeping the faith when life really hurts. The book of Job is a masterpiece of Hebrew poetry. It is an epic poem set in an ancient time. This epic story details one man's struggle to maintain his faith while mired in misery. 
Job was not a prophet, nor was he a priest. He was an ordinary person. An ordinary person blessed by God. This man had been blessed with health, wealth, and status. But when we examine his story, we discover that his greatest possession was his faith. Job possessed that kind of faith that William Barthart prayed for when he wrote that ancient hymn, O oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe, that will not mummer, nor complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain will lean upon his God. A faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without, that when in danger knows no fear, and in darkness feels no doubt. That is the kind of faith you can rely on when life really hurts. Job's story is very relevant to us today. How many of us can include our faith in our inventory of possessions? How important is our relationship with God? Is our faith strong enough to endure misfortune? Is it able to bear up under the weight of heavy burdens? Are we able to believe that love is stronger than hate when hate is raging all around? Can we maintain our faith when life is really hurting us? Can we hold on to our faith when we are marred in misery? While scholars tend to disagree on the authorship of Job, the intent of the story is clear. It was written to inspire good people facing a crisis of faith created by unexplained suffering. Although the problem of suffering is discussed, providing a definitive answer to the problem of human suffering is not the writer's primary concern. Faith is his primary concern not to explain or analyze the problem of human suffering. For suffering is difficult to explain. Sometimes the causes of suffering are clear and God's purposes are plain. But there are other times when the cause of suffering and the purpose of suffering is impossible to clearly discern. Job's suffering and agony was out of proportion. His plight did not fit the norm and the regular explanations were unsatisfactory. The unifying theme of the story of Job is his ability to maintain his faith in spite of all of his suffering. The saga of Job clearly illustrates this truth. Faith helps when life hurts. Faith helps when life really hurts. The point of the book of Job is not suffering. The point of the book of Job is enduring faith. The fundamental question is not what God is doing when life hurts. The fundamental question is what is Job going to do when life really hurts? The same is true for you and I. When we find ourselves mired in misery, the important question is not, what is God going to do? But rather, how are we going to react? Will our faith hold up or will it crumble like a house of cards? If our faith crumbles, we might just heed the advice of Job's wife and curse God and die. But if our faith is strong, we can shout with Job, Though he slay me, yet will I 
trust him. As Christians, we must be prepared for the moments in our life when our faith is confronted with misery, pain, and suffering. It is essential that Christians understand that being a follower of Christ does not prevent suffering, nor does it give us immunity from sorrow, pain, or grief. Christ warned his disciples directly and us indirectly of the perils that will occur on our journey of faith. According to John 16 and 33, the master said, here on this earth you will have trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. According to the text, Job is an exceedingly righteous man. Although the King James Version calls him perfect, in the original text he is described as being pious and upright. He honored God. He avoided evil. Job was devout. Job was respectable. He was obedient to God. The book of Job teaches us that there is an aspect of human misery that is not the penalty of sin, and neither is it corrective or redemptive. But rather, it is a test of faith, a test of faith that confirms our trust in God. Without any advance warning, Job's life was turned upside down. He lost possessions, he lost servants, and he lost his children. In time, he would lose his health, his relationship with his wife would be strained, and his closest friends would become caustic critics. To make matters even worse, during the deepest moments of his suffering, God is silent. Yet in all this, Job held on to his faith. That is the challenge for all believers. When things fall apart, when life really hurts, and when God goes silent, can you still believe? When our wealth is replaced with poverty, can we still feel blessed? When God is silent. Can we still trust him? Can we say with the unknown victim who wrote these words on the walls of a concentration camp in Germany, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. And I believe in love even when there is no one there to show it. And I believe in God even when he is silent. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. I believe in love, even when there is no one there to show it. And I believe in God, even when he is silent. Can we sing with confidence this old anthem of faith? I trust in God wherever I may be upon the land or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me. He makes the rose an object of his care. He guides the eagles through the pathless air, and surely he remembers me. My heavenly Father watches over me. We can, if our faith is mature, we can if we truly possess the beliefs we profess, when life really hurts, our faith will assess, our faith will accept, and our faith will acknowledge God. When he was really hurting, Job assessed his situations. That's clearly stated in verse 21 of the first chapter. At the beginning of his suffering, he declared, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. 
This was an assessment that allowed him to look both backwards and forward. Although he now had nothing, for Job that was not a new condition. Like Paul, Job knew what it was to have and he also knew what it was to be without. There have been times in his life when he did not have possessions, servants or children. He declares, naked I came into the world. And even though misery had brought him to a painful state, it was not a new situation. This attitude allowed Job to maintain his faith when life was really hurting, when he was in the midst of misery. He did not give in to panic, nor did he sink into despair. He assessed his situation, and he envisioned the hand of God even when he was in the cauldron of catastrophe. His faith also allowed him to accept the reality of his suffering. A false faith ignores facts, denies truth, and tries to create an alternative reality. A false faith ignores facts, denies truth, and attempts to create an alternate reality. But a true faith embraces facts, accepts the truth, and deals with the current reality. A true faith embraces facts. A true faith accepts the truth. A true faith deals with the current reality. A false faith is grounded in wishful thinking. But an enduring faith is built on hope in the unfailing promises of God. Wishful thinking believes that everything will work out. Faith believes that God will work everything out. Remember that. A wishful thinking believes that everything will work itself out. But faith believes that God will work everything out. Faith does not deny the darkness. Faith does not dismiss the danger. But faith believes that God will be our light and that God will rescue, God will redeem, and God will restore. Job expressed this kind of faith when he declared, I know that my Redeemer lives, and even though skin worms may destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. In the words of an old sage, when you come to the edge of all the light you know and you're about to drop off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is knowing that one of two things is about to happen. Either there will be something solid for you to stand on or you are about to be given the ability to fly. In the midst of misery, when life really hurts, faith assesses the situation. Faith accepts reality. But more importantly, when life really hurts, faith allows us to acknowledge God. Job acknowledged God through worship. The Bible tells us then Job rose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshiped. The use of the word then in the passage is instructive. The word then identifies Job's moment of grief. Job did not grieve the loss of his oxen, his donkeys, his camels, or his sheep, for he remained seated and calm. But when he received word that all of his children had perished, his posture changed. Then he rose, tore his mantle, shaved his head, fell to the ground. 
Job listened to the first three messengers while sitting in silence. But the fourth messenger moved him to overwhelming grief. According to one commentator, the depth of his grief is indicated by the change in his posture, his position. The tearing of his mantle reflected his torn heart and the loss of those he loved by the act of cutting off his hair of his head. These actions were expressions of tremendous grief and validated the fact that he was really hurting. But they were not indicative of despair. In the midst of terrible, overwhelming grief, Job performed an act of adoration. Humbling himself under the mighty hand of God, Job fell to the ground before God in worship. Job unknowingly defeated Satan, for instead of cursing God as the tempter had predicted, Job's faith empowered him to worship despite grief, hurt, and misery. The word worship is derived from an old English word meaning to declare worthiness. True worship is an expression of the worthiness of God. It is acknowledging and treasuring God above all things and in every situation. It is the continuous cry of the angels who stand in the presence of God. Worthy is He. And it should be the anthem of all believers. When life really hurts, never forget that God is worthy. He is worthy of honor. He is worthy of glory. He is worthy of praise. Job lost many precious things. But Job never lost his praise. Job lost many precious things. But Job never lost his praise. In the trying moments of life, Never forget that our Lord and our Savior is always worthy to be praised. The Christ who redeemed us and who gives us the strength for our struggles is always worthy to be praised. The lyrics of the modern gospel song echo the testimony of the faithful. The words that go, I lost some good friends along life's way. Some were loved ones departed in heaven to stay, but thank God I didn't lose everything. I've lost faith in people who said they cared, yet in my time of crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith, but most of all, I never lost my praise. From the rising of the sod until the going down of the same, the Christ of the cross is worthy of praise. Praise Him, who is the only begotten Son of God. Thank Him for His blessings, but praise Him for His very being. Thank Him for what He has done, but praise Him because of who He is. He is the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is Job's Redeemer, Malachi's Refiner, Zephaniah's Branch, Peter's Rock, John's Lamb, David's Helper, and our only hope. He is our shield. He is our defender. He is the ancient of days. He will be with us in sorrow's valley. He will sustain us in troubling time. He will restore us in his own good time. Worthy, worthy to be praised is that lamb who was slain. 
the Lamb who suffered for our sins and was crucified for our salvation, but God raised him up on the third day. He is worthy to be praised. Death could not defeat him, and the grave could not hold him. Life may take many things from you, but when life really hurts, hold on to your praise. May grace, mercy, and peace, the love of God, and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit strengthen you and abide with you in your going out and in your coming in, in your laughter, in your leisure, in your struggles, and in your pain, now and forever. Amen. Be blessed.